Welcome to this week's edition of Squirrel here on Bent TV, Channel 31, which is your community station. And let's introduce this week's panel. Panel, we're not allowed to say that word. Let's introduce this week's squealers. Um, on my far left, we have the lovely Sally Gold. Now, make her welcome. Hi, y'all. Last week's host and the woman with the most, Amy. Hi, Amy. <laughs> Hi, How are you doing? And our celebrity, I mean, Peter O'Grady on the end. Yay! Yay. <laughs> and the lovely Troy Ware. Hi. And of course, I'm Paul, and you should know that by now. Um, let's get into it. We've got um, a big and interesting show coming out this week. Um, we'll get straight into it straight away. Peter, you want to... Uh, yeah, um, I've got some uh, more news about the AIDS crisis in Africa. <coughs> um, Swaziland, they have, um, they've had about 50,000 people dying in, of AIDS in Swaziland, and they've come up with a fairly radical plan to cut down on AIDS. They've banned young women from having sex for five years. Isn't that kind of fun? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how they're going to do that, but during this period they can't... Um, they can't have sex, they can't shake hands with males, and they can't wear pants. Um, and any man that sort of violates that sort of thing will be fined a cow. Don't oh, find a cow? Yes. That, a, that's a, I mean, a it's, fairly it's hefty kind of, fine. I know, and it's kind of funny, but at the same time it's kind of sad to think that that's what they've got to do to actually... But then doesn't that spread of promote um, homosexuality? Because uh, the guys still want to have sex, they can't do it with a girl. Well, you know, they might do it with a cow, that's another story. And we were wondering what the pants, what the reference was was to the pants, but apparently it's because you can see the women's crutch. Oh, yeah. Because that's, you know, supposed to be a big tip. I mean, it happens to you all the time, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, she's in pants. Oh, my goodness. I've got to excuse yeah. myself. Just a very... I don't know how they yeah, police yeah. it, but there yeah. you go. Very please. interesting, isn't it? And, and how do they police how it? How do they yeah, police exactly. it? But I suppose, I don't know. Big Maybe brother that culture is watching. <laughs> now. Yes. All things retro. All things... All things... ABC goes to pot. Bill and Ben are coming back. They're coming Yay. back to TV. Um, they're not going to be puppets anymore, though. They're going to be those uh, animated models that move frame by frame. And weed isn't coming back. Oh, don't break what I Maybe fix. a little too don't politically break. incorrect. What, a little bit of weed? Yeah. So, but he's going to have lots. Of, they're going to have lots of new friends and stuff. So yeah, Bill and Ben are coming back. And um, there are there are a few people on this panel who are old enough to remember Bill and Ben. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, you said yeah. that we wouldn't remember. <laughs> it, and I remember it very much. Yeah, and also Ellen. Oh, sad oh, Ellen dear. news. What she doing? We all know how much I love Ellen. She's straight and married. Um, no, but she said that. Uh, that Anne Heche and the split and everything broke her heart. It was oh. the first time well, that she's so. had they her heart broken. They were together for three years. Yes, I know, but Anne Heche obviously isn't that heartbroken, is she? Well, you she's know, pregnant. Well, she mm. said she was insane until two weeks ago. Well, so. mm. And Ellen's Did quoted saying that um, she hasn't read Anne Heche's book and she doesn't want to. She doesn't want to know her version because uh, her truth it's is her real. truth. That's well, Anne Heche's mum read it and said it was a load of crap. And Hayes' mum said can that. Can I say crap? Yes. Can you say crap? Oh, well, yeah. oh, I said twice. But yeah, apparently, yeah, it's a load of hogwash. Mm. There you go. Mm. I just thought I'd throw that in. Mm. Good. Um, mm. All right. I think you can say hogwash. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Miss um, Media... What have you got for us today? <laughs> well, um, you going buzzing there? around the community last Thursday night was the Joy Melbourne AGM, and the announcement was made that... Um, um, in terms of the timing of the final announcement, which it sounds very bureaucratic, it will be before Christmas, so there's a little bit of certainty into the process. Three months to go. Um, in vital community news, happy birthday to my sister Susie for today. <laughs> and, um, oh, hi, Susie. Yeah. And watch out for Also's Incognito coming up on Saturday the 20th. The Also Dance Party support them because they do good things for the community. So there's all sorts oh, of things fantastic. bubbling around there, and that's a QBH, which... I, must, I haven't been there, but I've heard it is sensational it's as a venue. Yes. I've not been either, but it's apparently no, it's a fabulous good. venue. Mm. Right. Huge. Yeah. Oh, so mm. Huge. Don't you? <laughs> 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 like that commercial. Have you seen that commercial where the girls yeah. don't lift their arms up? That's really funny. <laughs> and it's Troy, boy. If you talk about Madonna, you're going to move. Yeah. Uh, listen, look, I've got so much entertainment news to tell you guys this week. It's Mr. Entertainment. So first of all, we've got Britney. 
She's got a seven million dollar deal with Pepsi, which is supposed to be the biggest deal Pepsi have ever done, beating Michael seven Jackson, million. Spice Girls, and Madonna. But um, she got caught in Sydney with a photo of a half drinking Coke bottle. <laughs> <laughs> so as you can imagine, Pepsi pay her seven million dollars, and they're not too happy. And uh, there's no outcomes yet. But also on oh, Britney, she's pulled out of the tribute album or tribute song. What more can I give? She was going to do with Michael Jackson, Destiny Child, Backstreet Boys, and Maya for the victims of the. Um, U.S. terrorist attack, and whilst we're on that, another song "We Are Family" is going to be re-recorded by Diana Ross, Sugar Ray, Cheryl Crow, Run DMC, Dionne Warwick, and Cindy Lauper, and they will also go to that. And a third one that uh, has done many wonderful things for the victims of uh, the USA, and it's actually for the orphan children, is Madonna donated all of her um, proceeds from one of her LA concerts. Concert? I heard oh, about yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And um, now we go to Kylie, who has gone number one with uh, her song in Australia. And why wouldn't And it? London. She, she did go number oh, one. She's yeah. actually become... She beat Posh. It's the most Thank successful God. single in London this year, only being beaten by Shaggy's Thank Angel. Please. And she's now become the uh, face for the um, train from UK to Paris. She's got. That, a, I'm a bit. I know. She's about, doing anyway. an ad which will show her catching the train to Paris to do a day shopping, as we all do. <laughs> yes. She does. You seen, have you seen Sarah Marie's new film clip? Oh, <laughs> oh, I think I like it. We wondered where she'd been. Well, here she is, and she's also got a book coming out soon, and her pajamas that she's launching. Did you, you get what? the name of the book? No. Life according to Sarah Marie. Um. <laughs> People will buy How anything, won't they? Don't you yeah. be nasty about Sarah Marie, you vicious <laughs> no, little lesbian. I like Sarah Marie, but... Oh, oh she's all right. Is she? yeah, she's not the one of the ones that takes the... Far. the, 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 the she she funny. Excuse me, if this world can have Mickey Webster in the top ten, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 there's not, room for all of us. Not happy about that, either. All right, now we have some footage coming up, which I think... <gasps> yes. Our Ms. Ms. Media might be uh, in it, so let's go and have a look at that now. Sally Goldner on lifestyles of the rich and famous. We've invaded the private bathrooms of so many people and we are going to find out who we have invaded today. By God, oh, it's Doreen yeah, Manganini. Yeah, How are you? I'm very well, darling. And you? I'm really good, thanks. And Doreen, what have you been up to lately? We um, haven't seen you as much, I think. I've been in Sydney performing four nights a week. Just won a Diva Award in Sydney for my live singing. So that was two weeks ago, but doing four nights up there for a little while. Hey, four night, four nights a week, and a, and a D for award. Well, that how, how did you feel about winning that? It was amazing to be in both cities and win divas in both cities. Has just been wonderful. Wow, so will there be an Australian Diva Awards and will you be nominated? Oh, who knows? Let's hope so. <laughs> who knows? Well, you, you're doing, obviously doing great things. I mean, there must be a, a huge feeling for you here tonight at Outback doing what you're doing. It's absolutely wonderful to be part of the night. And I just want to say happy birthday to Outback because it's um, wonderful. And I haven't been for a couple of, for a while. So I haven't done one, for, I think, for about three. So it's nice to actually be here with everyone tonight. Fair enough. And just like, finally, um, in terms of the, the Sydney versus Melbourne scene, like, is there a difference in feel in any way or um, the there's, same? A, there's a lot of difference, but I think, you know, both of them love drag shows, so, you know, they love to be entertained. Well, that's the thing. They love a frock, they love a sequin, and they support our community. And so what well, we're I had to wear the Aboriginal flag for Outback, so... Absolutely. Well, Dorian Manganini, thank you for being out black and pinkly proud as well, and keep up your great work. Oh, and everyone at Squeal, keep up a great job too. It's wonderful. Thank you. We're out of here. Yeah. Thank you for that. Dorian, that was lovely to say that we're doing a good job here, and uh, anyone else out there that thinks we're doing a good job too, it'd be nice to hear from you. And that was, of course, the wonderful Ms. Media, Sally Goldner, and the lovely Doreen Manganini. Now, before we go any further, I have forgotten very rudely to introduce our Auslan uh, interpreter today. That is Jodie Mundy. So, um, please make her work. <laughs> All right, now we have the first instalment from the very respectable Mr. Dave Truman on the Q Melbourne News Desk. Thank you, Paul. Um, this is David Truman reporting from the Squeal News Desk on behalf of the uh, Queer News, the Australia's premier online internet and news and discussion group. Most of the articles this week on Queer, Queer News Melbourne have centred around the tragedy at the World Trade Centre, reflecting many poignant stories of gays and lesbians involved in the rescue work. A particular notice was that of Officer Vinny Gerasitano, a member of the, uh, the gay Officers Action League and a member of the New York Police Department 
who poignantly describes the first nine days of recovery efforts over there and his personal involvement of digging comrades out of the wreckage of the fallen buildings. At the same time, the Law Enforcement Gay and Lesbian International was holding its annual world seminar in Los Angeles and uh, many of the participants there abandoned the conference to travel halfway across America to uh, attend and assist their comrades in New York. It's also been confirmed that a gay Briton, uh, Jack Graham Berkeley, a product manager, was one of the uh, two gay men that were on the passenger airlines that crashed into the tower. Tributes uh, have been left on uh, Graham's website on the internet. Again from the United States, Gay blood donors are again being turned away and refused. Gay and bisexual men in the US have been told that they cannot donate blood, neither can women who have sex with them. These regulations were brought into effect some five years ago and the current desperate situation in the United States is apparently not being changed. For any of these stories and others, you can contact uh, Queer News Melbourne on the internet by going to Yahoo groups and typing in QMAL in the search function. Back to you, Paul, and the squealers. All right, thank you, Dave. Um, yes, we're going to talk a little bit more about the uh, American tragedy when we uh, come back in the next segment. Just to let you know that next week's uh, intros and outros for all the show will be all for the Outblack, which was about a week ago, I understand. That's right, great, great Very successful night, night now down at the Star. Yeah, a lot of fun, a um, lot of good And that's a done. recurring thing now? Yeah, it seems to be happening sort of every few months, and of, and of course, um, but the last one was their fourth birthday, so um, they're they're growing really strong and a lot of support there. So good to see our community strengthening. Fantastic, excellent. Mm. All right, how we yeah, how we go? We are uh, okay. <laughs> There's people doing everything yeah. everywhere again. Mm. Um, all right, stay tuned. Come back very shortly. There'll be more of us sitting around here. Mm. See ya. Here on Bet TV Channel 31, which of course is your community Asian. station. Oh, okay, yeah. very good. Everyone's going. Well, we're expecting to yeah. have to go in then. Yeah, <laughs> I'd stop it, but, that because uh, you all sound like you're on uh, 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 some sort of mind-altering <laughs> drug when we were doing it. Let's yeah. introduce our no next guest, Tony Briffra. Briffra. I even <laughs> tried to do it beforehand, I know I always do. And Tony is from AISSG. AIS Support Group. AIS Support Group, all right. And um, do you want to tell them the whole name? Because I tried yeah, to. Yeah, sure. Yep. AIS is just one of many intersex conditions. Um, it stands for Androgen Insensitivity Syndrome, but we include people with different intersex conditions as well. Okay. Um, and we're a support group f for people all around Australia and overseas as well. Um, all right. Can we break it back yeah, sure. down to yep, sure. intersex itself? A lot yep. of um, uh, it's a new term to a yep. lot of us just yep. recently. So can we talk about that itself? Yeah, sure. It's uh, basically encompasses people that were born with a natural biological variation that makes them not completely male or completely female. And another time and place, they were called hermaphrodites. hermaphrodites. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and so this is a, a support group that was started here in Australia itself? Yes, this one was. It was actually started by an endocrinologist about 16 years ago in so Melbourne. actually by a doctor? By a doctor. Oh, well, isn't that fantastic? Um, it is. Um, so, And we've moved away f away from that just so that we're, we're a bit more independent and we can actually talk to the doctors a bit more and tell them more about the way that we want things. Yeah. But yes, a doctor actually did start it. Wow. Unreal. Australia. All right. Um, and it's, uh, uh, do you have a weekly meeting where you all get together or is it just more of a group that 
um, that runs on a continual basis that people we can, have, can uh, jump into. We at have any a few time. different national meetings a, a year. We've we've got a next one in the next few uh, couple of months mm -hmm. um, in Melbourne, um, but we communicate by email and through a newsletter and all those sorts of things, and you know, get together for dinners and do all those other sort of, those other mm -hmm. things cool. from time to time. Yeah, and the, the thing is, perhaps some people might not quite get the difference, say, between intersex and transgender. What, what mm -hmm. would, yeah. How would you put that um, across? Well, personally, my point of view is that uh, transgender people have a type of intersex condition. I'm on the record for saying that. Um, but basically, trans inter intersex people have a physical condition that we can we can actually prove. So it's a it's a medical biological condition that we can we can show. Whereas with transgender, unfortunately, at this stage, um, there isn't anything that can biologically prove that you have this condition. Yeah, they yes. can't point to X gene or X whatever and say, yeah. that's it. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Can you say that um, before that um, intersex babies, they're not either, they're not male or female. Does that, that um, as they get older, does that change? Does, that, does one become more apparent or do, what happens? How do they? That varies with intersex condition. Um, okay. Some intersex conditions, you can actually be born looking completely female and virilise spontaneously sorry, masculinise, go through puberty, <laughs> sorry, um, and end up looking as a male when, you, when, when you're a teenager. So the testes end up descending and all those sorts of things happen naturally. Wow. It depends on the intersex condition. Other, other people with, like, complete AIS, for example, have a, a body that looks exactly female, um, always will, and they just happen to have a Y chromosome and internal testes. But... Do they usually leave it that long, or are parents sort of forced to make a choice mm, early on? Yeah. And, and that that's can be quite difficult, I guess. Yeah. It can be devastating to it's, some of them. It totally is totally devastating. Such a difficult situation for mm. parents, and that's mm. why we include parents in the support group, um, because doctors often do force parents into making a decision uh, about the sex of rearing mm. and about surgically reinforcing that. Um, which obviously is irreversible. So there's no mm. chance for the natural progression then of the mm. of that body to to either define itself as male or yeah, female, and, or mm. to define define itself as an intersex but, yeah, person. And mm. exactly, and more importantly, self determination. It mm. takes away the mm. person's right to decide yeah. what mm. they want totally. to, to do. Totally. Um, to break it down, I've always had this debate with my mother about circumcision. Yes. No, 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 people are going to say about me talking about circumcision again. But I, you know that I was done because my father was done. That to yeah. me is not a good enough reason. No, I, know, agree. And, and, I agree. And, and it's the same sort of thing, you know. Yep. These kids are being born with this condition and not given the chance to to, to make that decision for themselves. Yep. And that people in higher power are making mm. these decisions. They're playing God more. That's or right. And if we too. if we take that step one, you know, one step further and look at female genital mutilation, totally, totally banned. Yeah. Mm. We don't. It doesn't matter if it's for religious, religious reasons song. or whatever. Mm. It's just illegal. Mm. Um, Would it be a lot? For what about us? Would it be a lot for someone to deal with though, having to make that choice, like, you know, when they're a teenager, teenage is quite hard enough mm. to, you know, going through puberty and, you know, period pressure, yeah. is, would that some, some of them be too big a choice to give them to make um, at that age too? Speaking as someone who was stuffed up as a, as a child and surgically assigned to the wrong gender, um, I mean, it's never going to be easy. I'm not going to pretend that, it, that it's easy, but um, at least, you, you know, you have options. So if you're, say, 12 year, years old, you were raised as a female, you identify as male, um, you can take the necessary steps if you, you know, if you've been provided with uh, psychiatric counselling mm -hmm. and, you know, um, and contact with support groups and all those sorts of things to, to help you and your family come to terms with this. Mm -hmm. right. So no, there, there sure. are ways to combat. All right, okay, we're going to, this is a really interesting subject, so we're going to yeah. can the rest of that last segment. We're going to come back in a minute and keep going on here with Tony. We're now going to the second instalment from Dave Truman on the news desk. Take it away, Dave. Thank you, Paul. One of Melbourne's largest Catholic colleges, Santa Monica's in Epping, has been accused of breaching the state's equal opportunities laws in effectively banning Year 12 students from bringing same-sex partners to the final year social. A source close to the school has speculated that the new ruling may have been due to an incident last year in which a male student expressed interest in bringing a same-sex partner to the social. Santa Monica's deputy principal, Marina Shakiro, denies the allegation and sa said that the ruling not to bring same-sex partners is not discriminatory but aimed at reducing uh, alcohol abuse and older students returning to the school. On a lighter note, in the UK, Elton John is mooting the fact that he may get married to his same-sex partner, uh, David Burns. Apparently, the ageing rocker 
has decided that he needs to take steps to protect his partner's interest in the event that he dies in the foreseeable future. The Elton John estate is estimated to be worth £4 million. And on the same note, the first couple have been married in the London registry in the UK. Ian Burford and Alex Carbine have been together for 38 years. Carbine joked after being offered makeovers prior to the ceremony uh, and the world media coverage remarked, we're old enough and we look good enough to each other already. As a, a point towards the end, the party for the celebrating their uh, union was uh, celebrated at the Cardigan Hotel uh, the location where Oscar Wilde was arrested. Finally, in uh, New Zealand, the Mr Gay New Zealand contest, which was to be held at the Labor Day weekend in Wellington, has been abandoned due to uh, lack of sponsorship and according to Chris Geller, Keller, the organiser, bitchiness and backstabbing in the gay community. Mr Keller described the gay community as being its own worst enemy and suggested that people needed to wake up and smell the coffee. Back to you, Paul. And thank you for that, Dave. Um, yeah, very interesting. The um, Mr. Gay New Zealand has folded. I was just wondering if Anzac might have been one of these. Let's not get into that. <laughs> now, just to, uh, it's not that hard a last name. Briffa is not that hard a last name, but when people spell it, Incorrectly, <laughs> that's when I have hard time. So I will just get that through. Now, Sally, did you have another question? Yeah, I did. I mean, we've heard about some of the difficulties that intersex and AIS people face. Is there any progress locally, nationally, internationally in sort of getting things to a better state of affairs? Yeah, the last uh, almost two years now has seen huge strides being undertaken and you know achieved by the support group. Um, things like we're working with doctors more, so they're actually attending our national conferences and we're working with them to come up with ways of, you know, treating families and children with, with different intersex conditions. Um, things like birth certificates, we now can mm -hmm. have birth certificates oh, yeah. corrected. Really wow. um, the, however, Victoria, with the, we can officially have indeterminate, also known as intersex, um, which is just not acceptable to us. Yeah. I mean, no, if, because what we're saying is, I mean, you know, it's all about self-identified gender. If we identify as intersex, In well, we should have intersex. It's not indeterminate right, at all. Like, that's we right, know. It's like, yeah, it's like, <laughs> we know what we it's are. like you can't make up your mind. That's right. Yeah. It's like, that's exactly yeah, right. Yeah, right. So, Hello. So, so is there less pressure now, like, for parents to, to, to make, make a decision, decision really quick? Yeah. Is no, I'd, no, I'd like the to say that there was, there. but the pressure is still there. What we'd really like to see doctors do is get them in, get the parents in contact with the support group, mm. because we can put them yeah. in touch with other parents. Mm. That's that that well, well, yeah, yeah, you'd have to do that. You'd have to hear from other parents to be able to understand. But they don't do that. Because they normally. Yeah. And it's really sad. Well, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be mid spoken about other that no. this is something that happens to other people. It's just no, you know, right. let's talk about what you want to Doctors do to your child. Make it out that it's just so rare there aren't any right. yeah, there well, isn't anybody else. Well that was gonna be my next question. Yeah. Do you have figures? Are there and Yeah, um well, you know, intersex conditions vary, but about one in one thousand people have an intersex wow. condition. One in one thousand. So one in one thousand. So that's about nineteen thousand Australians. Wow. So yeah, you that's a lot of wow. That's mm -hmm. yeah. It's huge. Oh, it's a whole lot. And this is something that, you know, with, so without this support group, they'd have nothing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Which is phenomenal and quite frightening, really, yeah. when you think about but it. It, isn't it? it sounds like to me that the sort of prejudice that says gay and lesbian isn't normal or transgender, it's, all, it's almost like the same thing's coming on to intersex people, yeah. isn't it? Well, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. That's my point. Like, I mean, culturally, it's always been boy and girl. So we've got a, a you need a whole cultural shift time type yep. of thing with it, don't you? Well, yeah. what gets me is yeah. what happened to these people prior to the medical uh, establishment yeah. interfering with what is a natural occurrence. Mm, what happened to these true. people? They were left to carry on their lives naturally. Well, it's for, in some in some cultures, they're... You know, just everyone's just so accepting mm. of of people who change gender, and you know, well, the, the, a, in the Indian and culture and the, uh, and a few of the Asian cultures mm. actually embrace it, and yeah, and, and really. it's part of their their family and their culture. Definitely. In the Dominican Republic, there are people called Guevadochis, and they have a condition called right. five alpha reductase, and oh, they wow. they naturally virilize at, at puberty, so oh, they okay. masculinize and. And everybody knows about them, and they're revered in, in, in society. Sorry, we're going to have to. We're going to quickly get the contact details. Just, just the phone number there. We're going to. Phone number is nine three one five 
8889 and very quickly email AISSG at iPrimus.com.au We'll plug that again when we come back. Thank no. you very much no, for no coming problems. in Thank today. you very much for having us. And I'm glad I got your name right in Thank the end. <laughs> We're out of here. Thank come you. back. Thanks, ben TV. No worries. Thank you. Thank you. installment here on Squirrel Bent TV, Squirrel, on Channel Squirrel. 31. Eh, eh, eh. That's right, and oh. we had no guests. No. But we did have the girls from the um, Lilith um, Co. come in, um, and there's oh. a production come out shortly um, that they were coming in to talk to us about. That was my postcard gone? I've lost it. There it is. Is that the, as in the Lilith Festival that happens? Um, well, no. This is, um, it's directed by the Lilith Company. It's a uh, play. It's on September and October, the 27th, 28th, 4th and 5th at 8.30. It's, um, it's a, it's a women's group, but they had to have a man in, in this, this section because there's, um, a part of that is Adam. And, and oh, so they wanted. Okay. They, they were going to have a drag king, but then they decided that they'd really have a, <laughs> a, a guy in there. Unfortunately, they had a full dress rehearsal today, so they couldn't um, to stay here and and talk um, about it today. Mm, but okay. um, we're going to go along and see the production, and yeah. uh, we'll let you know about it definitely. Mm -hmm. and they couldn't um, bring their snake. There was a <laughs> lot. <of laughs> and we were so upset about oh, that. We were devastated. Weren't well, we? That was going to get right away. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Because yeah. everyone saw what I was like with the blue and spiders when we had them on. Yeah, now a few nice. other things we'll get in. Um, hats off. We've been talking about that yeah. recently, um, which is Oz Showbiz Cares Equity Fights AIDS. It has another hats off coming up very shortly. Sunday the 11th of November this year um, and as usual tickets will be at Ticketek. Now I ticket -tick, bumped ticket -tick, into ticket -tick, the lovely ticket -tick. Annie Phelan uh, this week down nice. in Clarendon Street and she sent her best wishes to everybody Aww. and um, wants to come in very shortly and talk to us about the next hat. So this will be unreal. She's now also really there Annie. was a minus 18 but was that this week uh, or was it next week? Uh, no, it's just Wednesday. Just Wednesday night, I believe, September the twenty sixth. Oh, I'm going off the top of my head, so hooray! I've got it right. And oh, 386 Chapel Street, uh, South Yarra. Quite best thing. I'm going off the top of my head. So nine five one zero double five six nine is the Also Foundation. They always have lots of details about minus eighteen. Well done. Oh, separation. Oh, right. <laughs> she's, a, she's just like oh, a data bank. Oh, I know. Oh, shit. <laughs> she's got a. Um, uh, 64 meg card show somewhere. But anyway, <laughs> uh, um, Friday, the 2nd of November at the Greyhound Hotel yeah. is the inaugural right. Rainbow Gong Show. Now, mm. which Get should be on. very interesting. It's a uh, Bent TV uh, fundraiser, gold coin entry for uh, the donation. The time is at 7.30 at the Greyhound Hotel, which is on Brighton Road in St Kilda. It's going to be so much fun. It mm. is going to be Have you guys sorted out your act yet? We haven't sorted out something yet. Oh, but top secret. Been, uh, oh, ideas. Highly confidential top secret. Yes. There was a few <laughs> ideas bandied around the, uh, the yes. bar at the Peel last night by none other than the, the lovely Tiffany Minogue and her very <laughs> talented sister, which <laughs> was at some cocktail party. That's a lovely Dale from DT's there. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, yes. Now, uh, blah, 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 blah. okay. Um, unless you've been really not paying attention at all this mm -hmm. week, um, or the last couple of weeks, yeah. Um, yeah. something uh, has happened in, in the world that has, has changed it dramatically. And I know that sounds dramatic, but yeah, it but is, it it oh, is oh, never going to be the same again. Um, and anyone that thinks that we here in Australia aren't affected by this is just living with their head totally up their backside, I'm afraid. Um, I've, one of the most poignant pictures that um, I found uh, about all this is these two beautiful fireboys. I don't know if um, anyone can get that. Um, just the camaraderie and mateship that has been shown between all of these boys has been quite amazing. No, mm. no one's going to pick that up. Um, mm. We should mention that um, we didn't, 
cover it last week. We didn't talk about it because there had been so much media mm. coverage and everyone's been talking about it and we sort of thought we'd do. Yeah, just, you know, just offer a lighthearted a alternative. For a while. Yeah, yeah, but mm -hmm. we do have to. Obviously, we have to talk about. It. I mean, it's Sooner affected so many of our communities' lives as well, too. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I found out also this week that a girlfriend of mine was actually booked on one of the flights that hit the tower um, oh God, and had oh cancelled a week earlier. Yeah, so it's that amazing all the stories that are coming out of people that you know were, would have been there and why they didn't like sleeping in or going out the night before and was too hungover or yeah. you know. I, who, who was it that left their camera behind? Oh, yeah. Thorpey. Thorpey, yeah. Thorpey left his camera behind, so he went back. So, to think how very only even Thorpe would have been yeah. in that building. 20 minutes. Well, Fergie like, was... You know. Fergie. Fergie. Well, you know, well, Fergie was, like, three minutes away, apparently. He <coughs> caught in traffic and, and stuff amazing. as well. Um, uh, uh, one thing that it's really brought to me is that um, we can't waste time anymore. Um, I used to say that life's too short to worry about this mm. and life's too short for that. It really is now, guys, and I would just yeah. really encourage everyone to mm. um, have a look at their lives and take out all that crap that really means nothing yeah. and concentrate on what's really important, that's friends and family, and, um, and do those things that you've always been putting off um, yeah. and live your life, yeah? And that's yeah. basically what I want to say. Anyone yeah. else got anything quickly they want to I in? I just quickly wanted to touch on the... Uh, everyone throwing around the words like uh, retribution and revenge yes. and people striking back. You know, America's going through this huge grief at the moment because all those innocent people died, thousands of innocent people, but there are thousands of innocent people in Afghanistan yes. too. Mm, and definitely. so maybe we should think about that a little yeah, carefully. And it right. reminds me, my mother was a hippie and she always used to say that fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. You can't do it. That's mm. interesting. That's all right, yeah. on that, we're going to go to the news desk now and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more. Take it away, Dave. And thank you again, Paul. Thank you, Scrollers. Maintaining the serious note, just discussing a number of things coming up in Melbourne in the next few weeks. One particular one that's uh, very close to my me is Police Remembrance Day, which will take place on this coming uh, Friday the 28th and also services on the 29th. As you can see, all the Squealers and I today are wearing the blue ribbons. And uh, these blue ribbons can be obtained from news agencies, police stations across the state, and you can make donations to the tins available there. Anybody that would like to have a rugged, hairy police bear join them on some occasion, these particular ones, the one I'm holding now, Constable T Bear, are available for $28 plus postage from the Blue Ribbon Foundation. For those of you that don't know, the Blue Ribbon Foundation was established to perpetuate the memory of Victoria police members killed in the line of duty and all of their money up to two million dollars a year goes to hospital charities. The sixth International Congress on AIDS in Asia and Pacific is taking place between the 5th and 10th of October this year. It brings together 4,000 delegates from throughout the world. If you're interested in being a volunteer for these could we get you to contact uh, Susie Mola Hartray on 0398656731 or contact us down here at Squeal and we'll let you know. One that's always been another favourite of mine is of course the AIDS Memorial Candlelight Vigil and Quilt Project which will be taking place uh, according to my screed here on Sunday October the 7th. The largest candlelight vigil in Melbourne has seen for many years will take place. The candlelight vigil will be held in the new Melbourne Museum Plaza from 6.30 and there are panels coming from all over the world and Hong Kong and the Congress I just mentioned is also taking part on it. Um, on behalf of Queer News Melbourne, thank you very much and for uh, the best internet service for news and discussion, uh, look for Queer Melbourne in the Yahoo groups on the internet. Thank you, Paul. Contacts. Oh, the MCV contacts. Oh, the MCV contacts. Contact Ben TV. I'm sorry, coming on your screen now. Uh, if you wish to contact Ben TV, Post Office Box 1414 in Collingwood, 3066, or phone us on 9419 4745, or fax 9419 4753, or email us here at squealnews at qmail.com.au. Thank you, and back to Paul. All right, thank you, Dave. Um, I don't know what it is about the Ben. 
TV context, but everyone forgets we've got one minute to go. All right. Um, just something that I, I wanted to... It's made with the, with the Police Remembrance Day coming up. It's a shame that we need a tragedy like this to, to appreciate our boys. Um, mm. Thank you to all the firemen and pro police and all the emergency services yeah. here in Australia and worldwide that look after us and care for us. And our hearts are totally with all of you here um, in Australia and in America also um, yeah. as we prepare to what I think looks like World War Three, but anyway, that's well, just yeah. my opinion. Can I just add a quick, thought, very, very quick thought on that? The thought that struck me since it all happened was that the, sadly the terror of the people in the planes herded down the back. Mm. But in contrast to that, the courage of the people who took over one of those totally. flights and yeah, saved innocent absolutely. lives. If their totally. courage inspires the leaders of America and all the rest, we may have a less worse outcome. Absolutely. absolutely. All right, guys, take care. Come back and join us next week here on Squirrel Bent TV. Bye. This show was proudly brought to you by Jane's Bar at the Dome, 19 Commercial Road, Melbourne.